This isn't the video I originally intended to create. I was ready to tear this film to pieces, but then I read an article with Matrix Resurrections writer-director Lana Wachowski which completely changed my view on this movie, and maybe it's going to change yours too. Let me tell you how I got to this point. When I left the cinema after watching Matrix Regurgitations, I was so mad. I was mad at the filmmaker, the cast, the crew. I'm putting you on my list of enemies. But mainly I was mad at myself. Mad that nearly 20 years on, I hadn't learnt my lesson. See, I was so hyped for Matrix Reloaded back in 2003. However, like a fat bully sitting on your chest in the playground, the crushing weight of disappointment took a long time to leave me. And I know, in the run-up to Matrix reiterations, a lot of the internet was saying, well, actually, if you re-watch the second and third films, you'll See, there's a lot of interesting themes interweaved through. No, shut up, shut up, shut up. I watched Reloaded and Revelation in the run up to the new film, and you know what new insight I got? None. They are long, boring, introspective, pseudo psychological poopy pants. And yet, the first trailer for Matrix Repetitions got me hyped again. I was back in 2002. My naive, idiot, teenage brain was reawoken, hungry for a good follow-up to one of the most groundbreaking sci-fi films ever, and ready to devour this new serving hole. This was going to be great. Keanu was John Wicking about, so you knew the fight scenes were going to be good. Ah, okay. Seems to just be force-pushing everyone. Well, I guess he is... 57. Anyway, Yahya Abdul-Mateen II is in it, and he's great by the way. Check him out in HBO's Watchmen if you haven't already. You know if they're recasting Morpheus, he'll bring some gravitas to the role of... Okay, uh, so they've given him lines and direction that would be better placed in an MCU movie. I know, I know, he's, he's having a moment. Well, he can lend his hand to anything. Um, well, at least they won't cast Agent Smith with an actor whose previous big roles include voicing an animation and a character in a musical. Oh. Well, actually, that's kind of the same. Just kidding, Hugo rules. And I mean, yes, there's a trailer out there showing scenes from the new film and how they mimic scenes in the original trilogy, but it's not like they just stick clips from those old films into this new film because they don't trust the audience to be able to appreciate these callback shots on their own. Oh, no, no, they did that. Mr. Anderson! Anyway, you can probably tell that I was more than a little disappointed in the final film. So what did Lana Wachowski say that completely flipped my view of this film? Well, there's a line in one of the many, many, many meta moments in the film where Jonathan Groff's character says that Warner Brothers want to make a fourth Matrix and they'll do it with or without the original creator's input. I thought they couldn't do that. Oh, they can. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised that Warner Brothers even gave the Wachowskis an option. I mean, since the first Matrix, their output has been in steady critical and box office decline, but hey, they did. And then Lana Wachowski made this film, which initially I thought was a big old F you to Warner Brothers, just full of over-the-top meta-commentary, way too many heavy-handed nostalgia-induced references, and the worst of the blockbuster tropes of the last decade all mashed up together, all as a way to make Warner Brothers regret ever resurrecting the property which she kind of wished had laid dormant. But now, I don't think that's the case. See, in an interview with media outlet IndieWire, Lana talks about the difficulties her and her sibling Lily faced transitioning and how both her parents and a close friend died within a five-week period uh, around a similar time. Uh, it was also during that time that Warner Brothers approached Lana about the Matrix sequel. Now, Lily was apparently not in the headspace to take on a project like this, understandably, but for Lana, after so much change and loss, she was given an opportunity to work with the characters she loved, with actors she knew, and in her own words, I couldn't have my mum and dad. Yet suddenly I had Neo and Trinity, arguably the two most important characters in my life. It was immediately comforting to have these two characters alive again. Yeah, after so much loss and death, Lana was allowed to resurrect something from the past she thought was dead, and whilst it doesn't bring back any of her loved ones, it looks like making this film was a way of saying, hey, no one ever really dies. And initially that's what annoyed me about The Matrix Resurrections, the lack of stakes of permanency to any of the actions taken in the first three films. But now, I... I get it. And maybe people should lay off Matrix Resurrections a bit. I know I'm going to from now on. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel for more content, and we're going to be doing prize giveaways when the channel reaches 100, 500, and 1,000 subscribers. 